Hello everybody, welcome to another daily dose of gaming news and all that good stuff. And as always, I also publish on Rumble, on the blogger site, there's an archive post thingy. Uh, and also everything is on Patreon for extra support there. And any kind of updates usually I go about on the Twitter X platform, so uh, give a follow there. Um, yeah, yesterday I did manage to get around and did a uh, live stream. I think I'm missing uh, one VOD to be published, uh, not from yesterday's live stream. But yeah, I, I, the main thing is I, I got uh, I encountered some issues with the internet. I think it was from my side. Um, the stream went down, and then I tried to uh, to to stream again, uh, but it, uh, I didn't manage to do that on Rumble. So it's only like one hour uh, and something on Rumble. Uh, but I did manage to continue stream on YouTube. Again, uh, on Rumble, I think it was an issue with the slot stuff for the, the streaming thing there. Um, again, I wish that soon enough they will implement the way to stream more in line with the, how you do it on, on YouTube. And, and, and especially bring about uh, at least uh, the H.265 codec support there. Um, or AV1. Uh, given that AV1 is royalty free, I think it's a better way to implement that. I think the the H two six five has still royalties if you want to to do that, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but the VOD, I, I record everything. Uh, I, I, see, I even the got a couple uh, happened a couple of times. The the Elden Ring uh, they just logged out of the server or didn't ping to the server there. But I think it was my uh, from my end. Uh, yeah, weird stuff. But again, it's. Uh, I assume it's bound to happen because uh, I don't have any other solution at this moment in time uh, just to use Wi-Fi. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I try to manage another solution, but at the moment, uh, at this moment in time, I, I, I don't have any other solution except for having internet uh, with Wi-Fi. I know, I know. Um, but uh, yeah, later on we'll have uh, Jedi Fallen, uh, not Fallen Order, sorry, Jedi Survivor episode. Uh, and tomorrow it will be Mutant Year Zero. Uh, I think we still have uh, at least a couple of episodes on Mutant Year Zero and then we'll wrap up and start on Dead Space Remake um, uh, series there um, uh, regarding VOD stuff uh, again, uh, today I think I can do the 36 uh, the VOD 36 and then from uh, yesterday's uh, live stream probably tomorrow, I don't know uh, depending on the time of how long it takes to process the, the video there but yeah, basically it's what I got from the uh, anything, that, uh, everything that I wanted to say regarding uh, the channel uh, updates there. In terms of news, uh, similarly the RX 7900 XTX uh, is available for below 850. Again, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, they, they say it's the first time that it's uh, first time is available. I assume it's this model. Uh, the power call hellbound uh, again the hellbounds are pretty good usually um, they can be um, overclocked a little bit there but uh, again it uh, overclocking gpus it, it, but yeah the 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 the, the, the um, this aib uh, usually it's pretty good this this power color stuff this one sapphire and the the one that i have uh, xfx uh, brand there, it's always uh, pretty good. But I, I assume the, the the price here is referencing to to this um, model in specific. Again, um, great price, given that MSRP of the the only competitor in terms of performance is uh, the 4080 uh, Super. Yeah, replace the 4080 normal. I think it's 4080 Super. Uh, has relatively kind of the same performance for all intents and purposes in overall terms. Uh, but the MSRP is $1,000 uh, at the MSRP because then uh, they are not, I don't think they are available at that MSRP, at the NVIDIA GPUs. And again, for $850, it, it, it starts to compete in terms of price range to a certain degree with the, the next uh, GPU of uh, of NVIDIA, which is the 4070 Ti Super, which is, uh, it, it loses even in terms of performance with the 7900 XT variant, if not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're on a high end, uh, again, this is a pretty good GPU. I don't have any issues. Um, if you follow me up 
uh, I got the XFX one, the Mark for 310, whatever it is. It's the the the, the highest model there from from that brand. Uh, yeah, I, I can. Uh, what I do is uh, I, I, I play all basically all games at least 4K60 so far. Usually around high settings or more. Uh, older games, of course, I just uh, go above 140 for sure. Um, and I can stream, record uh, at the same time and play at the same time, uh, usually without any issues. Again, it might happen, like uh, codec overloading might happen from time to time, but it's only happened to me twice since uh, I've been having this CPU for over a year, give or a take. Now it's going to make a year in this summer, if not mistaken. But yeah, this, uh, this model, uh, the 7900XTX is, is, is a pretty good one. Um, again, if you're interested in ray tracing and uh, upscaling technologies uh, in terms of quality, the NVIDIA at the moment is the better choice there, uh, but that uh, you're paying a huge premium for that. And at this range, uh, even ray tracing uh, can be very demanding on, on high-end GPUs because people start putting ray tracing, but then they have to put upscaling and then they put frame regeneration. It, it goes to go about the same thing there. Basically, I don't see a lot of difference, uh, especially if you if you don't play static games where you can really appreciate like slow moving games uh, where you can appreciate all the ray tracing uh, reflections and, and, and illuminations and all that jazz. Uh, if you are more action driven, I, I don't see an, uh, any kind of advantages of putting ray tracing because usually you're not going to notice if you're like more fast pacing, uh, especially for example, if you do racing games or even like Call of Duty kind of games, th th there's no point no, and no need to, to, to use the, the ray tracing stuff there. Uh, but yeah, um, AMD is pretty good for the uh, price to performance there. Uh, they are, they are uh, even on the rest of the lineup, even the 7800 XT, which it's below the $500. Um, I think there was uh, a case here on, and other brands uh, from this model uh, were about 450 which is a good price from what it delivers there, uh, given the conditions of the market, of course. I think $400 is the, the best price for the 7800 XT. Um, but yeah, uh, again, uh, AMD is, has a lot of good things to offer at this moment. Again, um, I don't know in terms of, for example, the NVIDIA 5000 series, what you, uh, again, NVIDIA is on the AI uh, uh, hype train there. I don't see them taking a lot of uh, concerns of being more competitive on the GPU market because I don't know, it doesn't make that much money for them, at least at this moment in time. Uh, maybe they will regret that decision of not putting more competitive uh, GPUs for, for us but uh, yeah, at this moment at the high end, uh, uh, at least I recommend uh, AMD um, I, I don't see uh, spending $1000 on, on on a GPU at this moment in time, even though at the time, uh, given the condition of the market, I spend around $1,000 for this, the XTX that I have. Uh, but yeah, now it's way, way cheaper. Uh, but yeah, regarding GPUs is what I got today. Uh, regarding memory stuff, we got Samsung Foundry secures 3 billion contract from AMD to supply cutting edge uh, high bandwidth memory, the free e So this is for the AI accelerators there. Um, this is the, one of the, the newer ones they announced, Samsung. Uh, they got the 12 layer DRAM, uh, whatever it is. Okay, it's DRAM for, for the AI accelerators. I'm not an engineer, but uh, it's good to see that uh, there is some competition here because usually I don't think it's Samsung that uh, is like the main um, uh, foundry there. They, they usually go from TM CMC, if not mistaken, uh, which by itself. Uh, I'm not sure which is the, 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 the manufacturer that usually gets the, 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 the huge slice of the pie regarding this kind of uh, orders. Uh, but yeah, it's good to see. Uh, and in exchange, I think on the deal, they, they, they're talking about that Samsung has, uh, will buy some uh, AMD GPUs. Again, um, I assume this is the, 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 some AI accelerators there. So might be some deal there that it's happening for, for, for Samsung to have their... Uh, AI stuff there because Samsung has the cell phone stuff which has got its own 
AI thing on their cell phones, and I don't know how much is going to be uh, introduced with these things. But yeah, it seems they, they are doing their own uh, business partnerships, which is also good, also good because it breeds competition. Hopefully it breeds more competition. Uh, and again, regarding the high uh, bandwidth memory, this one's uh, standard, uh, it's basically 50% faster over the previous standard there. Um, but yeah, it's good to see that uh, we are seeing some movements here. Um, yeah, it's good to see. It's good to see. And regarding gaming, uh, I didn't s check yet uh, any kind of video uh, reviews from the usual reviewers that I follow up. Uh, but Sandland review, supposedly now it's up. I, I need to check more in depth here. Uh, but at least the WCCF Tech uh, did their only review. And it's got a kind of overall kind of round eight. Uh, so the pros, uh, uh, the pros uh, I need to check this out with more detail. But yeah, um, uh, again, Toriyama Universe, surprising substantial story, impressive presentation, fun array of vehicles, ambitious world design. The only thing is regular combat can get a little bit repetitive and some open world elements overdone. Mainly because of uh, probably the ambitious world design there, you might fall into some traps there, but overall seems to be an excellent game. Eight, eight and a half is always a good one, but I need to check more um, more reviews here. Um, but yeah, you've got the, 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 the big one, which is Celebrate. Uh, I saw some uh, videos in the from IGN motherfuckers complaining that uh, the, the I don't know, these people are completely insane uh, because uh, they don't like to see beautiful women. Um, I don't know, they, that's their main complaint, even though they give it a 7 out of 10, which is a good one. Uh, again, it, it demonstrates, even though they, they just want to throw down um, uh, the, this kind of games here with the AI and, and the work shit that they they trying to uh, present themselves to to to, to the consumer there. Um, the game itself got a, a, at least a seven out of ten because they cannot um, argue against good mechanics, uh, decent world design, uh, serviceable story. Uh, but I think the combat here is the it's the main thing. I think it has a very interesting twist here, very aggressive, uh, like in terms of the combat there, very. Um, Bloodborne like from what I understand in terms of aggressiveness and how you approach combat uh, very interesting uh, yeah uh, but I got the, the review here from Facts of Life oh and I forgot that even the IGN guys uh, took a screenshot of the hard art thing there that there was like a graffiti hard and then there, there is the hard store kind of thing that is from a character uh, they were complaining that uh, racist stuff there again they have to complain something the with which i didn't understand what the hard are it's coming there uh i first time i, I read it like harder like uh, trying to get something like harder harder store or something like that. i don't know uh, I, I really don't understand these people uh yeah they they they, they IGN was the, the least of them they were trying to get away a balance here, but I think Stellar Breaks is breaking their minds a little bit there. Um, because uh, all uh, all reviews, they cannot they cannot find a way to give a bad review for this game. Um, but yeah, eight, eight and a half um, from Facts of Life here. Uh, the, 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 I saw the, the, the video review here and I read uh, the couple of highlights. Usually this is the script that they use on the written reviews on the videos there. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, gameplay, audio, visual design seems to be excellent. Also, the story is serviceable enough that it uh, uh, adds to the thing there. Uh, again, the only thing is the, the repairability and the length of the game, which to a certain extent will affect a little bit on the, on the price point there. Uh, but yeah, the, the game uh, seems pretty good. Uh, it's for PlayStation at this moment in time. Um, I don't know when it comes to PC, uh, but I will assume it'd be a, a, an excellent seller. They, they, they were talking about here, yeah, the standard edition, 70 bucks, that's a lot. Oh, this is a PlayStation 5 exclusive? Hmm. That's weird. Hopefully they, they, they will have a port soon enough. Uh, but yeah, the, the game itself seems uh, pretty good. Um, and with that, uh, we got uh, from a WCCF Tech article, but again, it, this is part from the, the Digital Foundry. Uh, I watched a little bit here uh, in terms of uh, the technical aspect of the engine itself and how it performs and everything. 
Um, the game seems almost basically flawless. They took advantage of Unreal Engine 4, which is uh, a plagued end version of the engine itself to a certain degree, regarding like vertical stuttering, the shading compilation stuff. Um, the game seems to run smooth on PS5, 60 frames on that uh, thing of the performance thing. On the, the high quality stuff, de delivers 40 FPS with the proper frame, uh, frame pacing, which is uh, what you need to do when you have lower uh, FPS there. Uh, and the, it sticks always with 60 uh, FPS, 99% of the time. And when it drops, it's like kind of a frame here and there. So the game itself is very well polished. Um, I just would like to see something like this on, on the PC platform there. Maybe this studio will uh, take some, um, some hints here. Um, because exclusivity, to a certain degree, is kind of dead. Uh, I understand the exclusivity thing here. It's to call people to for their platform. But uh, again, um, I, I don't see long-term longevity for certain games. Uh, having exclusivity. I don't like exclusivities of anything. Um, I, I hope that they will, at least until the end of the year, they will uh, end the exclusivity of, of this game on PS5 and, and bring it to Xbox and PC and other platforms if available at that time. But yeah, it, it's good to see that at least this game, given all the rumblings that everybody wants to put in uh, there regarding uh, uh, from woman standards, beauty standards, and all that jazz, and physics, which uh, got, got a lot of channels that cover that thing. I usually tend not to cover that because uh, in the overall scheme of things, uh, to a certain degree, we just uh, drive the attention to certain aspects that are, uh, in the overall scheme of things, irrelevant. Uh, which, in this case, if it's the game, it's good or not taking into account all the, from story, replayability, how it plays, if it's not, uh, if the story is good, the settings, all that stuff. If it's good, if it's good, regardless of what kind of characters they are, uh, the, regarding the politics that they try to, to approach on the game itself, regardless of sexualities, genders, whatever it is. When you, you focus yourself on making a good game, the game will be good by itself. It doesn't need any kind of ideology um injected uh when the game is good you don't have a, a you don't need excuses uh to try to sell and market the game but yeah again this seems to be a, a success here but we will see how it goes regarding the coverage of this game from the this mainstream media gaming media which is it's just that it's gaming media coverage because they are not journalists i don't consider them journalists because uh again when you um, put yourself as supposedly a journalist just report facts. They don't. Uh, they are not activists. Um, and when, uh, yeah, basically, it's what I want to say. Um, you're not a journalist when you are an activist. So please don't call yourself gaming journalism. On this, uh, at least this, this. I stopped following Gamespot. I, I never followed too much on Kotaku. I heard they were good like a lot of years ago. I don't follow polygons. All of this bullshit kind of uh, things. I don't give them clicks. Um, and IGN, I just have their Twitter uh, thing there that I follow up for some headlines that might be some use here, but uh, they, they, they are. I'm reaching the point that I even will stop following them. We got better alternative, uh, more independent media focused people that do really try to cover games. Uh, to, we got Facts for Life, which is basically as far as I know, kind of independent, so uh, they, they, they do their own thing, even though they have a very particular focus on games, on certain kind of games, uh, like RPGs and, and the such. Uh, yeah, uh, we need to start um, give a little bit more um, support to, uh, to independent creators and more independent companies, than where they don't see that they have like an investment of having a specific ideology implemented on, on the market and, it, it, and things will start to correct themselves because uh, when you see these Kotaku guys and these Polygon people and, 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 and even IGN, they did agree to try to make a fuss of, out of something. It's mainly because they are, uh, they're losing clicks, they're losing money, they're bleeding and they need headlines to bring people to see them and they need some attention. 
because uh, they need to i don't know they need attention they, they are very uh not self-aware of the the uh the issues that they have especially these uh, activist people um yeah uh but yeah uh enough of the rant let's go for some gaming deals again resident evil uh, franchise is still uh on on the deal here again i will leave all the resident evils in uh links on the description below uh we got breath edge this seems to be a, a pretty funny game um not very long uh but uh, for the price seems to be the the the, the best uh, um the best price here for for the this kind of game what it is it's kind of open world survival crafting got the, an immortal chicken uh, as a companion thing there but yeah it seems to be a pretty decent game here uh, we got also Sekiro Shadow Side Twice is still on sale 50 percent off uh, we got Alien Start Descent again uh, now it's a very positive reviews it got like a semi trouble launch with some performance issue on the game but now everything seems to be patched up at least mostly. Uh, and yeah, very positive reviews, 45% off. We got also Planet of Love, uh, sorry, Planet of Lana. Uh, very good game. Uh, sec uh, 2D platformer puzzler kind of a thing here. Um, I don't think we have dialogue. Everything is uh, is told by the, the graphics there. Seems pretty interesting, this game. Uh, we got also The Long Dark. Again, one of those cases uh, of uh, success, early access success there. Uh, since it was announced in early access i wish listed this game and follow it up and and seems to be a very great case of success i, I really do 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 like this kind of things and it's a survival open world survival craft also uh, got some different modes also got kind of a story mode there if you want to dive uh, dwell more in, into the story side of things but yeah pretty good game uh got also dredge 40 percent off uh, we got Pacific Drive again. A handful of people uh, developed this game. Uh, again, uh, seemingly very in line with kind of uh, what is the, the what I want to say the um, roguelike kind of elements there. You got to you got to do the runs. You got to scavenge, craft, and maintain the car there. Um, yeah, the, seems pretty pretty excellent this this game, and it's 20% 20 20 off on the deluxe edition, which I think it's the the better one. And lastly, we got this gone on GOG. Uh, again, I don't know if there are uh, mods for this game. A very underrated game. Um, uh, didn't get the attention that it deserved. It, it's been launched for a few years now. Uh, but yeah, it's 75% off on GOG. Uh, I'm not sure if there are mods here. Uh, but even though I think this game is uh, from the engine, the, um, the same engine that uh, Horizon and that's training i'm not sure um but it seems uh, that it is because this was a um, ps uh, playstation exclusive at the time but yeah there is no drms um and this is from band studio yeah i'm not sure about the engine now uh, i'm curious to to check that out but yeah uh again excellent uh, pc port also uh but yeah this is what I got for you today, guys. I'm just going to wrap up with a pack on my Patreon as usual. Uh, the Patreon is for extra support, and that extra support at this moment in time is uh, for me to focus on trying to get a storage solution for me to be able to get backups of backups of the stuff that I do for my clients, and also some extra space uh, for the videos that I do for the channel. And yeah, basically that's it. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one. So until then, I'm your master out.